right, here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lord Jamar, welcome back. <laughs> Peace was goody. Yeah, with the Yana and the Mean. You know what I mean? White shirt. Okay. How's the podcast doing? It's doing great, sir. Thank you for asking. Absolutely. You know, Rod Digger's the co-host now, Come permanent. On. I, I, I got her. That was like the universe just aligning up. And I don't know. I just saw her one day and I was like, oh, she would be perfect to rock with. Like that's such official hip hop knowledge in one room, male and female, yin and yang, perfect balance. I got to get her. So I coaxed her in to come in one day, and the response of the people got her to where she is now my permanent co-host. So thank you, people. Thank you, Rod Digger. And we about to go number one. There you go, man. This is what I tell people, like, you know, if you don't like the way things are out there, if you're complaining about someone doing a, a show or a, a podcast or on TV and you don't like them, do it yourself. Put your own, you know, two cents out there and record it yourself and put it out there and build up your own fan base. And show your vision. See, mm -hmm. I, I I watched a lot of podcasts and there were certain things that I was like, I don't really like that about this. And You know what I mean? But yeah, instead of sitting around talking shit about what you don't like, show and prove. You see what I'm saying? Your ideas. And then say, okay, well, this is how I would do it if I was going to do it. And that's why my shit is a work in progress all the time because, mm -hmm. you know, I have a vision, but it's always going to improve and it's always getting better. There you go. Now, recently, a song came out <laughs> from Prime, off the Prime 2 album. Shout out Premiere. P -p 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 Premiere. 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 The Five Nine. Okay. Let's go ahead and play a clip from that. Can we? Yeah. All let's, right. Let's play a little clip from that. In the fuck moments, this hip hop, all of the purists be too opinionated. You like it, you dig ride. Not a fan of it, then you hate. You getting interviewed by Vlad, you either telling a story that's incriminating or Lord Jamar what? discriminating. But white privilege do exist, I agree though. Okay. Labels used to tell you what's popular, now it's Vivo. Mm hmm. Mm. I dig it. I dig it too. <laughs> I'm not mad. Like, 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 I'm not mad. You're goddamn right I'm discriminating. We all discriminate. We know that. We yeah. know that. What's, 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 what's wrong with discrimination? Yeah, I like how he bunched us together, too. Come on, everybody bunches us together, dude. <laughs> Sometimes good and bad. You understand what I'm saying? But it is what it is. It's like, fuck it. Like, when you talk about Vlad, you're going to think of me, and when you think of me, you're going to think of Vlad a lot. Yeah. Like, it, it's just, that's how it is nowadays. Fuck it. It is what it is. Um, it is what it is for many years now. Uh, yeah, man, no, I like it. You know, and people are like, oh, he took a shot at you. And I'm like, it's all good. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, this is what people say. But is it a real shot? Like, what kind of shot did he take at you? I guess you're right. He said, you, uh, you're getting interviewed by Vlad, you either telling a story that's self-incriminating. Right. So that's a shot at whoever he feels like ah, is self-incriminating themselves doing, on your platform. Doing that interview. Now, a lot of people seem to feel that your platform is the go-to place for people to incriminate themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't necessarily feel that that line was a shot at you. It's just bringing up your platform and what people do on your platform. So yeah. one thing people do is incriminate themselves. And then when you see me, you know, on face value, it seems like all I do is come on here and discriminate mm -hmm. against, you know, white rappers, Eminem, gay people, whatever the case may be. Right, because the next line was, but white privilege. But white privilege do exist, I agree, though. Yeah. All right, so then what the fuck are we even talking about right now? <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it, it, it exists. And your homie is an admitted part of that white privilege. Like, mm -hmm. it's okay. But, like, I mean, I don't want the brother to, 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 to start looking like, and what he is looking like to some people, is that, that you know, that fucking house nigga that, yo, is is we sick today, master? You think people are looking at Royce like that? 
I've seen this in the comments more than once. I've seen people call him the dude from um, Django, Samuel J. Samuel Jackson's character. In regards to, uh, yeah, I'm not co-signing that, but I'm just know. telling you how people. I'm not saying I said that. Yeah. You don't want to be that guy, though. Is all I'm saying. And I'm saying I've seen people say that about him. I mean, but haven't they said that about Obama? Who? Obama? Okay. What? Who else they said that? About? I'm not saying a big Whoa. Obama fan right here. Okay, fair enough. There's certain people though, like like. I don't know. It just seems like every time somebody says something about Eminem, Royce is the one to come to his defense. Let's keep it fucking real. And I like Royce. I like Royce. But I got to keep hmm. it real. Like, keep it a thousand. Every time something is said about this guy, he's the one that comes to his defense. Speak for your fucking self, M. He don't want to speak to me, though. Well, Eminem doesn't really do interviews. Well. He don't really speak on... Well, I mean, talk shit about me in a rhyme or something. He'll, like, he'll do throw what a, he just did. He'll like, throw a subliminal in a... Well, do it. Know, Hit me with one, M. I'd love it. <laughs> I'd love it. But see, I win if that happens in his mind. It's like if I if he acknowledged me, then I win. You see? So he don't want me to do it. He's going to let his man do it. You see? Whereas it's almost the opposite of what I was talking about when it comes to, you know, we as black people needing to stand up and speak for ourselves. At a certain time that we needed that, Eminem stood up in front of for the brothers and spoke for the brothers. You see, now at a time when Eminem might need to speak up for himself, the brothers stand up and speak for him. You see, let's just speak for ourselves. That's all. That's all. But I like, listen, let the record reflect. I think Royce the Five Nine is a dope rapper. I already mm -hmm. said I like him better than Eminem. Um, and I'm just saying, don't be that guy. Well, don't be that house nigga. You know what I mean? Let this motherfucker speak for himself, B. Don't be that house nigga. And you're goddamn right I'm discriminating. We all discriminate. Motherfucker, you don't want to wear pro -keds. You like phone posits. You know what I mean? That's discrimination. You rocking a beard as opposed to a clean face. That's discrimination. We all discriminate. Well, anyways, great album. Prime, Prime 2 is a great project. I didn't hear the whole thing, but what, I, I what I've heard yeah, I is, the whole dope. Thing. is dope. I actually called Royce personally and got on the phone with him to thank him for, you know, right. actually mentioning us on the song. And did you tell him that I thought the line was dope? Yeah, I told, I told him you to tell yeah, him. Yeah, I told cool, him that. Cool, cool. Absolutely. <laughs> so, recently, we lost Craig Mack. <sighs> At 46. A flip boy, a flip boy all the time. I just love that line. Boy. I don't know why a flip boy, <laughs> a flip boy all the time. Yeah. Craig Mack had a very interesting career because he was actually the first hit song, the first song that I think Bad Boy released, Flavor and Year. Mm -hmm. Literally. If you, if you remember the original, you know, Promotional items, it was the Big Mac. Right. It was a Big Mac box. So it was a Biggie and Craig Mac combination. Right. You know, I guess when Puffy didn't have a lot of money, let me put two artists together in one. Um, put these two budgets together and we'll get this promotion out there. And right. that was a thing. The, yeah. big, the big Mac. Was Biggie out at that point yet? Or? Not really. Like, like he was just, but they yeah. both were just, but I think right. Craig Mac was. Well, Flavor, little ahead as far as coming out with some shit. When me. everyone heard Flavor in Your Ear, they heard that beat, it was over. Over. It was like, this wasn't a song that slowly grew on you. You just loved the song. And then his flow was so different. And, you know, and then the remix came. And that was... Remix was crazy. Remix was crazy. Mm -hmm. One of those rare situations where I think the remix was better than the original. Yes. You're right. Yeah. I remember I had I had Buster. Uh, did you feel like anyone's ever got you on a song? You t you tell me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, think. I, 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 I can't think of one. I ain't in no rush. <laughs> think. This is something that I love to really. Okay, I, I'll, I'll keep it one hundred with you. Mm -hmm. The flavor in your remix. I think Biggie got you on that one. I hear you, homie. I respect that, but 
At that time, when Features was happening, the hottest niggas went last. You went last on that song. I went last on every song at that every time. Song. You could go back to bunch of niggas on Heavy D's Blue Funk, Funk album. Yeah, you're right. I was last. Scenario, I was last. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. And this was his him saying that he had the hotter verse. I still disagree to this day. Because don't be mad, UPS is hiring is still something you say that's still everyone knows what you're talking about. Right, but hey, 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 that's catchy as a motherfucker. And that and for a DJ, that's a great place to catch the record. Like chicka chicka, hey, hey, hey. You look know, like like, I don't know, he give you a lot of memorable shit. There's a lot of memorable shit all the way through that remix. But I mean, to me, that's not the kind of song where I look at who's getting, I didn't even look at it like that. It's just like, I think everybody gave solid performances yeah. on that. Although LL's verse I thought was a little questionable, but. Uh, yeah, shit. I don't even know what that means still to this Delicious. Day. Blotitious. <laughs> I don't even know Stevie. Yeah. Delicious. Like, what? <laughs> Give me couscous. <laughs> Let me good. How's the Hollywood? But is, is it good? good? I guess like. Papa geez. love it. Yeah, and you know what it was? It. Like, I think like LL had been gone for a while and came back with that song. Mm -hmm. He hadn't really put out anything in a while. That was sort of like his comeback verse. Okay. That was a and great comeback. Sort of... I mean, that's a great record to get on. Huh? Yeah. Some and shit. there was actually a little bit of, you know, hip hop nerd trivia here. That video was the first time you ever saw LL's head. Mm, really? He always had a hat on. That's the first time he... He's always rocked a hat. I guess... His hairline was a little messed up. So. Um, that's what we're assuming. Yeah. I, I read his book. I think he had like, like got a jerry curl when he was younger and fucked up his hairline or something. Like <laughs> one of those. It's like a story. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting because uh, we had just put up this interview uh, with Tere and Rakim where he talked about how when he was on tour with LL, his man bet him a thousand dollars, you know, while he was slap fighting with LL uh, to try to knock LL's hat off. Me and L set up, we rocking. So L swinging hard as crap. <laughs> Ducking under like, yo, L, man, listen, man. And your hands is closed? Like, <laughs> what are you doing, man? He was like, he was like, nah, you know what? That's just the way. So I'm like, all right. So we rocking. He's swinging him, ducking up under him, smacking him in the, in the ribs, hitting him in the, you know, he tore. So I'm trying to get the hat off, trying to figure out how I can get up top, right? <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I know I used to know half the deck of 52. They look boxing style back in the day. So the first thing I did is reach down and untie the sneakers. <laughs> he got mad as hell. He was like, oh, you doing that? You like, nah, G, you know, just shot. So we set back up, he swing, Poof. I duck up on it, smack him in the back of his knee, buckle him a little bit. So I'm like, all right, if I can get him in the back of the knee, buckle him again, I'll get the hat off. <laughs> <laughs> so L get mad now. He's coming at me all fast, <laughs> throwing hard. <laughs> so I'm getting mad now. So I reached up, popped him, bing, and grabbed the hat, but it just went like that on his head. <laughs> so he was like, oh, you trying to take my hat off? You trying to... <laughs> like, nah, man, I'm trying, you know, it's 52. I'm going to take the hat and get it back to you. He's like, no, nah, you trying to take my hat off, bro. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it was serious, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was like a thing. Like, LL, you know, started getting angry over this situation. But anyways, that video was the first time you saw the top of LL's head. It was already shaved by this time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He was running like a little visor. You yeah. saw the top of his head. Right, okay. You never saw him with hair after that. You're right. It was always the baldy. Anyways. Craig Mack. Came out super strong. Huge song, huge remix. Mm -hmm. But then the other songs weren't really... Making moves with Puffy and some other shit you was can't like get down. Yeah, it wasn't really that song was all right, but it wasn't no flavor. No, <laughs> see, it's hard, man. When your first joint is like a super, like they still play flavor in your ear at like sporting events and shit yeah. like that. Like, like, <clears throat> yo, it's hard when your first song is so fucking big, and then to try to chase that, yo. It, it, man, I feel for some of these people, man. You know what I mean? Like, like, almost like the the gradual buildup as opposed to 
you know, you your biggest song is your biggest of your career. And then after right. that, everything else is just kind of like... Yeah, like uh, Lord Tariq, Peter Gunn's Deja Vu. It was like, they had some joints after that, but Deja Vu. I don't really remember them. You don't remember them, right. So he comes out with this single. The album, I guess, just does okay. And then Biggie just took over at that point. And then he never had a second album. Not that I know of. And I think he showed up on like a special delivery remix or something like a few years later. And then next time you saw him, he was at some cult <laughs> down some south. Old white, some dude. old white guy. Talking about, come on down, boy. Ain't you Craig Mack? Come on down. And this guy, I guess, is like a convicted child molester or something. Like It's like one of these cults. And then Craig Mack dies a few years later. Right. From a congenital heart failure, I think. I think uh, Eric Sermon talked about it. Okay. Um, and I remember I was watching the Puffy documentary, and he was trying to get Craig Mack. Like he had him on like on Facetime or something, trying to get him to like just come and just do one show. Craig Mack wasn't feeling it. He gave his life to, you know. Yeah, we actually reached out and tried to interview him. We actually reached that compound and talked to some people there, and yeah, wasn't gonna happen. Craig don't want to talk to you heathens. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, this is a theme that I we've spoken on before. I know we just spoke about it uh, on my show, how you know, a lot of people that used to be with Bad Boy turned to religion. The Bad Boy curse. Like, turned to religion hard body. Well, you got Mace. You got, you got Mace was Loon. a preacher. Loon went hardcore Muslim. Muslim. Uh, Shine became a, a Hasidic Jew. Yeah, uh, Jew. Craig yeah. Mack did, right. got in his cult. I'm hearing home one of them from Total. The dark skinned one with the short hair from Total is now on some hardcore Christian shit. Hmm. Um, G. Depp morally had to confess to some shit nobody even knew about, and <laughs> right. and, and and now he's locked up. Yeah, because of his conscience. I mean. I don't know what they saw over there, <laughs> but that's quite a, um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's very interesting. It's yeah. Very I think, interesting. Uh, that one dude, didn't he wrote, write a book called Dancing with the Devil? Who? One of the guys from Bad Boy. Um, he was like a little known dude, like uh, Mark Curry or something. Yeah, Mark Curry was a dude that was on Bad Boy. He was on one song that was kind of hot, Bad Boy for Life. Oh, we ain't going, going nowhere. And it was Black Rob and Mark Curry. Oh. So Mark the Curry other was, guy. Yeah, the guy that wasn't. That we didn't know, but yeah. he was all right. The new guy. Right. That was kind of nice with it. Yeah, he was. He, yeah, he had a deep voice, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that guy. Um, so he said Dancing with the Devil. So what, what did he see? Well, what kind of dance it's called? It's called Dancing with the Devil, How Puff Burned the Bad Boys of Hip Hop. Mm. Yeah, so it's basically uh, Curry hopes to provide a roadmap for reforms necessary to prevent artists from ending up in poverty, in prison, or in the grave. Mm. Or in a religious cult. <laughs> right. <laughs> the other the other option. Hmm. Um, I mean, rest in peace, Craig Mack. You know, I met him a few times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. He was cool. He was one of those dudes. He definitely had like a lot of energy, like the type of motherfucker he come in the room and he just, you know, mm. what up, y'all? You know, just like one of those guys, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, he's gonna ever, forever be, you know, a hip hop classic. Like that flavor in the ear has solidified you, yeah, for eternity. You gotta hand it to Puff, man. Like, I mean, imagine, imagine, because I think he signed to like Arista Records first. I think that that's who his deal was originally. Who, Craig Mack? No, uh, Bad Boy. Okay. Bad Boy, I think they had their deal originally with Arista, if I'm wrong. Then. Yeah, I think something like Yeah, Clive Davis. Yeah, well, Clive Davis, exactly. Mm -hmm. And imagine you, you start a brand new label, this label's giving you millions of dollars. And you bring in Craig Mack and Biggie and said, these are going to be my two superstars right here. This guy with, you know, 
fairly a rotund guy, a very rotund, and then a guy who would who 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 is not traditionally handsome. Let's say right there we go. <laughs> um, yes, and now you got a guy like yeah, with um, a big big fat dude with a lazy eye, right? And, and you say another guy with like yeah. Right, Some, you know, because well, it was like skin discoloration or something on the side of Craig Mack's face. Yeah, it might have been like maybe from acne or acne scars or something like no, that. No, I'm saying it was a whole, dis- almost, I don't know, not a vitiligo type oh, of thing. Oh, B- Biggie like, or Craig? No, Craig. Craig, like, okay. It, I don't know, it just looked kind of dark. Like when if we really turned to the side, like when I seen okay. him in, in person, yeah, like when he turned to the side, it was like a little darker or something, or like maybe a little patch or something like you yeah. see what I'm saying? And he looked like he might have had acne before. And right. You see what I'm saying? Right. And you bring in these two guys and you right. say, these are going to be my stars. Trust these me. These are going to be my stars. Trust and, me on and, this and, one. And I'm going to need a budget for these guys. Right. And I'm going to try to make them the sex symbols. And he succeeded with one of them. Well, I don't know if he tried that with Craig Mack. Probably not. But, well, I mean, you try it with everybody, right? You want the girls to, to like everybody. Well... You might want them, but to try to make somebody a sex symbol, see, see, Biggie set his shit up like a fat player. Like, you see what I'm saying? Um, which was not unheard of. Like, if you from the hood, you you actually did know guys like big, Heavy big D. fat dudes that was getting broad. Heavy D was like the first, like, fat, like, player rapper. And, and I remember there's even a story yeah. behind how he got signed I think Andre Harrell signed him, and it was like no one, no one saw this. Like, yeah, he's gonna be the player, the fat dude, and everyone looked at him and said, "Nah, <laughs> like y'all, y'all tripping. This is never gonna right, happen." Watch, you know, because you know, remember Heavy D, his teeth were kind of crazy, and well, yeah, yeah, I guess they were a little, a little, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little diagonal. No, they were a little like rounded or something, something think, like that, course. right? Um. And yeah, man, he turned Biggie into a bona fide sex symbol. I mean, girls was trying to fuck Biggie like, girls, they, girls, they love me. Because he's the overweight love of Heavy D. Like, they set that up. Biggie, one more chance. Like, you know, he's sitting there. I remember Even on Juicy, he kind of set it yeah. up for himself. No, listen, he was, I remember someone pointing this out. In the video for One More Chance, he's sitting there with his wife in the bed with her bra while he's talking to another chick on the phone. Play you know what shit. I'm saying? While his wife is just sitting there chilling, like waiting for him to be done. Some player shit. You see what I'm saying? Like that way my motherfucker say, well, hey, I can kind of believe this. Like, Yeah. I, th- I think it gave fat dudes a lot of confidence in general by putting that out in the universe. But I'm telling you, I knew fat guys, like even before Heavy D, I'm talking street fat guys with mm-hmm. money, where you be seeing them with them. Bad broad, and you'd be like, damn, like money really is <laughs> some shit out here. Like, I'm talking obese dudes I seen, but these dudes had some paper and they had bad, slim, you know what I mean? You know, I, I was talking about this recently where women look for stability. Absolutely. And a woman in her younger days might go for the bad boy. Might go for the, you know, the, the pretty the good boy, looking, yeah, you know, yeah. the athlete in high school, mm-hmm. the 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 jock, the whatever. You get older. You As want they get older, some sort of security. You want security. You want stability. You want someone who's going to be a father to the children. That's going to help help with the rent, help with the bills, mm-hmm. build and, something. And so now together. looks don't matter as much. Anymore. Looks don't matter as much. You know, and some girls get on that early. Like fuck it. If you got money, right? I, I don't you know. I don't like taking the bus, especially once I get a taste of it. I think that's what happens: is the taste. Mm-hmm. Once you got a guy with a car, I would say ninety percent of women will not go back and date a guy on the bus who's taking the bus. Mm. Once you date the guy with the car, right? Don't want to go back to the bus again. Not really. Not really. Unless. Unless he's, you know, fulfilling other parts right. of whatever. He's fucking the shit out of you. Right. And just like, fuck it. I'll get on that bus. I'll get on that bus. Because <laughs> that's a different type of stability. Right. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> You're getting good, stable dick. So it's Sexual like, stability. Yeah. The dick is stable. Uh-huh. I'll take it. <laughs> nice stable. Any kind of stability. Nice stable dick. 
<laughs> right. Um, yeah. So the fat dude with the with the bad chick doesn't surprise me. In fact, I think that once you get once money starts to play a role, the traditional dynamics of males and females starts to get reversed in a way where women will now start pursuing men more often than men are pursuing mm. women. Dudes with a lot of money ain't really chasing after girls all that tough. This is true. This is true. You're going to like what you like, but once you have a few dollars, you understand that you're, you have a lot of options. So, you know. Well, for some people, you already have a lot of options. You see, it just depends. Mm -hmm. Now, if you get money, that just makes it even worse. Right. You see? Um, yeah. But some people, if you didn't have options, now you get money. Now that's opened up a whole world of options. And this is where some people lose their minds. Right. Like uh, Kevin Hart. Like a Kevin Hart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even go. like a little Yachty. Yeah. He like a little yachty. Mm -hmm. He admitted he wouldn't get no bitches or nothing before this. Now he's probably losing his mind. NBA young boy was recently charged with kidnapping and assault. And felony assault, I believe. In that, because of that video with his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see the video? Mm -hmm. So, first of all, when you look at this relationship with NBA young boy and his girlfriend, it looks like one of these typical, dysfunctional, probably drug connected type of relationship you see. You know what I mean? First of all, I hardly even know who this guy is. I'm going to be honest. But he's dope. NBA Young Boy's dope. You know that song, uh, No Smoke? No oh, Smoke, that's no, no Smoke. No Smoke, no, no. I that's like it. that song. You don't want it. Okay. Yeah, that song. Yeah. What else does he have? Because I feel like I've been hearing his name for a second. Yeah. But that song, I feel like I just heard it. So why why have we been hearing about him? Well, he's got mixtapes full of material. Oh, okay. And you know he's been touring he's around. Just coming to the to the surface. That, the, the, to that, yeah, that, that song put him on. Yeah, that song put him over the top. All right, well, I like that song. Yeah. Okay, so go. So him and his girl, I think he's like eighteen. Now I see where it appears that he was putting hands on her, yeah. but then later she was like, "Nah, that wasn't him," or like defending him. Well, she, she was saying they were just girls. playing. Ah. Uh, Right, but it looked like he was whooping her out, like, Looks like he was whooping dragging her, her through the hall and all that type of shit, right? Yeah, and you know, before then, they got both of their names tattooed on their faces. Oh, word? Yeah, he got her name and she got his name. Okay. Which to me is, yeah, at 18 is really stupid. No, very stupid, but okay. At any age, I think it's stupid, but at 18 is extra stupid. Mm -hmm. um. Because <laughs> you might not, trust me, <laughs> trust me, I know you think it's a love for life, but... At 18, and Rex, because I remember there was this one, there was this one story. I'm not even sure if we really covered it because it was so weird. It was a story about, because, you know, he takes her on tour with him, you know? Oh, and but then he, he, he made her sleep on the, outside yeah, like in the while lobby. he fucked some bitches or something. Well, yeah, he, he brought some bitches up to his room, some women, sorry, I don't want to say bitches. Right. He brought some girls up to his room and made her sleep in the lobby, like on the couch. And you just was talking about Biggie. On the phone <laughs> with another girl. Yeah. This That's is some shit right level. there. And, and in fact, I remember there was this one video I saw. He brought his baby mama on tour with him so he could have his kid around. And he would get like his baby mom and his girlfriend to like argue and fight with each other. On purpose. On purpose. Okay. Granted, the baby mama doesn't look as cute as the, as the girlfriend. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, and it was just like, like the whole thing is just completely dysfunctional on, on a lot of different levels. Okay. We live in a dysfunctional world, in a dysfunctional society. This is just a symptom of that. I remember he tweeted, uh, just need to hurry up and die so the shit could be over. He's talking about himself? Yeah. Because he was, I remember in the beginning, he was like... He had beat like a, a murder or an attempted murder charge. He was like in jail, awaiting it. He ended up beating it and then he just, you know, went crazy. And then now all over again. I heard he had some dirty paperwork. Like, you know, his paperwork was fucked up in certain areas. Like, you know, he had some charges still that he had to deal with. So when he got caught, he got extradited back, I think, to Atlanta. Mm. And then, yeah, they're, they're trying to throw the book at him. And you need to chill. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? You need to chill and don't, you know, don't be beating up your girl and, and getting caught on camera with it. I think there's a side effect of even putting your girl out there like that. You know what I mean? Because she's now a little celebrity on her own. You know right. what I mean? She's making, number one, I remember I was talking to someone about this. If someone you care about is getting charged with some shit, don't 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 go on the internet and start talking about the damn case. You know what I'm saying? Like your lawyer will tell you to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like like what she said could be played to a jury and framed a certain type of way and whatever. Does this look like they're playing? Does this look like they're just playing around? Right. Look at him dragging her by the hair. Have you yeah. ever played with your Better sibling? Better off not saying nothing, right? Yeah, don't say nothing. Kodak Black in jail right now still. For, oh yeah, he went on what IG Live, Instagram Live, right. Instagram Live, and showed yeah weed around and his guns. kid and all that weed and now, guns the around his kid. He was on probation, I guess. So why people? Aren't mad at IG Live like they be mad at you, Vlad. IG Live's the feds, man. Exactly. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? IG like, Live like, is like, 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 Kodak wasn't even filming. Why they, they not mad at Twitter? I, I, Instagram, Facebook. Someone, some, one of the police agents at Instagram turned on Kodak Black's camera when he wasn't aware of it, so they could film him incriminating himself on camera, because really, IG is the police. And they're actually watching everybody and turning it on without you knowing and broadcasting it to the world. Well, they can be turning it on without you knowing. That's not yes. trivialize that. But are they broadcasting it to the world? No. Like, did they <laughs> get you caught? No. Like, you did this to yourself. So, but see, when you hear of Twitter or these other places, it's hard to really put a face to it. See, Vlad... And if you try to stay off camera, and still there's a face to this shit. You see what I'm saying? Right. Because your name is on the shit. So, I don't know. I just, yeah, that's a little funny to me. Like, 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 it's the same fucking thing. Like, motherfuckers just be telling on their own selves. Like, you know. I get on, I get on here and tell my opinion, but I'm not on here telling you about shit that I've... <laughs> Done in the past, done or not done, whatever the case may be. Like, you know what I mean? If I feel like it's incriminating. Fame is a hell of a drug. I would say fame is more addicted than yes, crack. Yes, and do whatever for it. Even incriminate yourself just for a few minutes of fame and attention. Right, because if you notice, and I'm starting to see the pattern here, Young Thug is starting to cool off a little bit. And then he comes back in with the little gay comments. The well, now it's calling tired. people my love and, and stuff like that. Now we see exactly what you're doing. Like now, and it's yeah. just kind of like whatever. Yeah, now we're kind of over it. Like, but yeah. see, now what do you got to do though? These niggas gonna have to up the ante at some point because calling niggas my love and all of that type of shit. We're already anesthetized. Anesthetized. I believe that's how you say the word, to it. We're already desensitized to it. So what you think the next level is in order to get attention, Vlad? Well, I saw a meme that said like the, the new rapper clout checklist. And it was like, diss Tupac, uh, say something gay, <laughs> wear a dress. And uh, there was like one more. It, it, it was like it was like a and all of that is getting tired real fast. You see, so now what's the next level? What's the next level? Full on. <laughs> I don't know. I know. I know what. I already know what it is. I already know what it is. You know what the fuck it is? Which is what? Full on bullshit, b. Like, one of these motherfuckers gonna tongue kiss each other in the fucking mouth. That's what the fuck they gonna do for attention. Then when that gets fucking, uh, you know, to be commonplace, they gonna be jerking niggas off and all. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you what the fuck road they're leading y'all down. 
And you can walk down that fucking road if you want to. I'm standing back here. I'm not going down there with y'all. <laughs> You're on your own. You're on your fucking own from here on in. Because I'm not walking down that road. Well, uh, Takashi 6 9 And you could say is the most talked about New York rapper right now. Yes. You know, he called himself the king of New York. And honestly, I checked the numbers. His album or mixtape, whatever, debuted at number four on the Billboard 200. He had like five songs on the charts. Like his songs are getting 20, 30 million views. Like, is he the most popular in New York right now? Yeah. 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 It doesn't make you nobody's king, bro. Yeah. When we talk about king of New York in hip hop and all of that, well, that has to do with music. Okay. I like some of his songs. You like some of his songs. Is it King of New York status? And when I talk about King of New York, the past people that have been in this category are Biggie's and Jay Z's and Nas's. Are you fucking telling me that this guy got anything comparative to any of the people that I just mentioned? Lyrically, no. All right. <laughs> Even sonically, musically. Is any of his music? Take the lyrics off. Does any of the beats even stand up to the, the best beats of any of those guys that I just mentioned? I mean, that Gummo beat is tough. Oh, my God. Gummo, Gummo's tough. Vlad, come on. Gummo, Don't get yourself Gummo, roasted in the comments Gummo, Gummo's right tough. And so Gummo's tougher than Ten Crack Commandments. The fact that you even yeah. have to debate that, not, Vlad, not really. no. needs I'll, I'll you to no. get... See, okay, please. Biggie, Biggie's sort of in, in his own category. Jay-Z. Nas, these are the people that we've spoken of as king of New York. And not only were they super popular at that time and even more <laughs> popular than he than this guy is right now, but their music was a thousand times better. So all I'm saying is, is he the king of New York in terms of popularity right now? Absolutely, yes he is. Mm -hmm. Okay? But... The real king of New York, when it comes to this hip hop shit and music and all of that, he's far from it. I say we have no king of New York right now. There Jay Z, is, huh? Jay Z. I mean, K Jay Z is gonna be the king of New York till somebody else really comes in and puts that stamp. Jay Z is the king of New York though, almost by default right now. Well, you, you can't you can't say by default because he's continued to put on. You know, put out quality work. You know, because we talked about the whole Rakim thing last time. You know, Rakim is up there, Jay Z with Jay Z lyrically, but he hasn't been dropping monumental shit in the same way that Jay continued to keep mm -hmm, dropping. Mm -hmm. Like, if, you know, four forty four dropped, everyone was fucking with it. You know, if Rakim dropped a new album right now, the purists would fuck with it. I would fuck with it. You would fuck with it. Most right, with people the, with the kids that listen to Gummo and all of that. <laughs> fuck with not it. so much, but the Gummo kids was listening to four forty four. Right. That's what I'm saying. Right. That's what but I'm saying. is is Jay Z? Well, yeah, he's he's super popular, king of New York. Um, yeah, he's that he's king of New York. King yes, of New York. he's king of New York. Um, but there, I don't even think there's nobody even coming close to that title. Like I hear certain names, and I'm like, yeah, this guy's good, but nowhere close to any king of New York status. Like you know what I mean? We got a lot of good guys though. A lot of up and coming, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Davies, people like that. I like him. Yeah. But just let's not talk about King of New York. You're not ready for that title yet, bro. Like you still, you still need to build your shit up, but I like where you're going. Um, but I don't think nobody really can be the King of New York right now. You know what I mean? Right now, other than a fucking Jay-Z. Yeah, uh, I agree. What did you think about the whole thing that happened in Texas with, like, you know, Jay Prince's sons? And, you know, basically, that you know, he said he ain't checking in. Right. And they shut his shows down. Right. He didn't perform. Right. He talked some shit on Instagram. Yeah. But he didn't perform. Well, here's the thing. At a scheduled show. Like, I can't front, like, it's hard for me to, like, not pay attention to this kid. Right. Like, like, I, it's like, it's hard to not pay attention to, to shit he's doing and saying and all this. Yo, I gotta almost give him credit for 
pulling up places where they telling them not to. Right. Okay? Like, like they talking shit, don't come to my city, da 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 and next minute you know this nigga's on Instagram. Like, yo, I'm here, motherfuckers. Like, you know what I'm saying? What the fuck y'all was talking about? You know, about? Astrodome all in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Hollywood sign. Like, and it's just kind of like, yo, this little motherfucker got some balls, yo. And, yeah. and, and you got to kind of like you it. Have you that. have to. You have to give him props for What? That. You have to. You have to. Now, see, I'm not into all of this gang culture, so I don't... I don't know about, like I said, I don't know what the rules are as far as checking in and all of that type of shit. Like, that's not the life I live. You see what I'm saying? Um, all I can say is I like his spirit. You know what I mean? As far as it appears that he don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? And, and, and you, a part of you got to like that. At the same time, you know... I'd like to see him move a little smarter. Like, I don't want to see him get hurt out here for no reason just because, you know, this formula of pushing people's buttons and all of that is working for you right now. And you see what I'm saying? Like how you're talking about fame is addicting. It's a motherfucker. Like, you talking about all this text, you're gangster. But at the end of the day, who really wants that? Like, who really wants you? Like, who really is like, I wish a motherfucker would? For real, for real. Yeah, I mean, it could go a few different ways. He can continue to keep talking shit and nothing, you know, he's protected. You know, it seems like the dudes that are with him are actually down to protect him. I remember, remember that LAX fight came out? And I remember his man pushed him back when those two dudes, you know, started to approach mm -hmm. them. He's like, nah, I'll handle this. Which is what dudes in that position are supposed to do. But he actually even kind of ran in and joined in the fight. Yeah, he got dropped a little bit, but you know what I mean? Like, he could continue to be well protected. You know, like, look at 50. 50's been protected all these years. People have tried to get at him. There's been shootings. There's been this. There's been that. <laughs> there's been fist fights. People have always stood in front of 50. Not to say 50 can't hold his own, because, he, you know, he can. But, but people have gotten in front of 50 to make sure that he's been okay with all the shit. And 50 has talked more shit than Takashi by a mile. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. As much as you think Takashi talks shit, 50 Cent? I love when 50 talks shit, though. About everybody. Like, See, you know what you I mean? Know why? I don't know. See, 50 got is more funny when more he funny. do it. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's like, he do it with a style and just with a, with such humor that like, that just real niggas could just relate yeah. to. And he makes songs about it. <laughs> Yo, I, you know? I smell pussy. And you know what I mean? And for some Pete, reason, man. I don't know. I don't I don't worry for 50. The way that I almost worry for this kid. Not that I'm worried, but I just feel like, bro, are you sure? Like, do you sure you know what you're getting into right now? Like, like, because, you know, I I feel it all, it could almost be partly like. The, naive, the naivete of age. Yeah. Along with, nigga, you ain't been nowhere before. Like, you a blood on your block. You understand what I'm saying? On your area, and, and, and you doing your gang shit in that area, but this is a whole country we live in. And shit is different. Shit is the same, but shit is different places. You understand? Right. I mean, what he really has to worry about, he don't have to worry about J. Prince Jr. He don't have to worry about whatever, you know, a particular rapper, really any rapper. Yes, these, these well, he, real he has, to, he has to worry about the regular motherfuckers who are feeling insulted because you just insulted their city and, and the heroes of their city. Okay. Who are just like, fuck it. Going to jail is the dude that shot up or stabbed this rainbow hair kid. I've been in jail before. I could do it. Oh, they Fuck like it. They're putting in work for the set. Putting in work. You see? You like, know, and, and the question is, is whether Takashi will continue to talk that shit after somebody gets killed around him. He gets shot and survives or stabbed or beat up really badly. You know what I mean? Because... Which we don't want to happen. We do not want this to happen. We do not. 
But this is, this is sort of the path that he's kind of rambling towards right now. Sooner or later, if you just keep doing it over and over and over again, you've already had a few close calls. There's been shootings in, was it uh, Kansas? Minnesota. Minnesota, I think. There, you know, the fight at LAX. The show's shut down in a bunch of different places. Sooner or later, someone's going to come. You know, you can't, you can't roll deep enough. Unless you start rolling with cops, which he's not doing. And doesn't that seem like it's always the case with, like, a friend or somebody will get killed all the time? Like, somebody in your entourage. Like, you always hear about, especially when people get to a certain point, it seems like, and that's why I guess people talk about a lot about this Illuminati shit, but it seems like some people, when they get to a certain point, they always lose somebody. Well, I mean, Wolf... One of Puffy's right hand men. A lot of it happened to a lot of people, a lot of people, countless people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and so yeah, how do you feel after that? Because you might feel like fuck it, whatever happens to me happens to me. But then some shit happened. Yeah, man, you wasn't even thinking of that. Well, Troy F. Right. Right. L look at the whole situation, and I'm not going to talk about the case. You know what I mean? But when you look at that situation on Troy's side. Banger's family hates him. Right. Uh, all his people that are around him, don't he don't fuck with them no more. You know what I'm saying? I guess, like, he was talking about in one of his posts, like, how you man, when you're the money, you know, when, when you're the money source, your people are supposed to take the charge for you or whatever, and, and they didn't, and they all turned, you know, and he stopped fucking with, like, Hovain and Young Lido and all these other dudes that was, like, really down him. You know, I, I remember Hovain, like, I remember... We had put up a post about Troy, and Hovain took offense to us, started talking shit to me on, you know, talking shit about me on Twitter because he's riding for his man. I understand why he did it. I'm not right. tripping, but now he don't fuck with that dude no more right. at all. And it's like, Takashi, something happened to one of your people. Watch this whole infrastructure start to fall apart on you. Yeah. Let's hope not, man. Let's, let's hope, hope Let's hope. You know what I mean? Because you got a lot of people following him, right? Now, what if, like, a light bulb went on his head, right? And he got on some positive shit right now. <laughs> Yo, he'd be able to lead a lot of young motherfuckers in a different direction than what he's leading them now. You see what I'm saying? Flip the script, Takashi. Flip the script. I interviewed Rallo recently. Mm -hmm. He's a rapper out of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. who actually, I fuck with a, a lot. Yeah, I like I like his interview. Yeah, I, I, I like him. I like his music. I like him as a person. And we talked about in our last Vlad TV interview. You said that you don't want industry chicks because ugly girls have the best pussy. <laughs> I think that. I think that. I fucked a lot of industry bitches, bro, and they just ain't have what I'm used to having and what I like doing, man. I ain't got time for that. I like to eat pussy, dog, for a long time. I like to fuck where I want to fuck. I like threesomes. I like I like shit that I like. So it might be better to another man, but my opinion is my opinion, dog. Like, ugly girls, like, they... <laughs> They know how to fuck, dog. Just like a fat girl know how to suck dick. They, 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 they know what they flaw is, so they, they got to do something else better than the average person. You smell me? They got to know ain't nobody going to want that part, so shit, they going to make sure that part right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's a philosophy. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's a philosophy. Well, and, and what I said in the interview was that I'll be honest, because I mean, I, I started thinking, you know, when you were saying that, if I think back about all the girls that I used to just fantasize about, that I I, I finally got to mess with at certain points in my life, that puts way in on that. I was usually disappointed. Yeah, yeah, them two, them hoes too pretty, dog. Them hoes too pretty. Then they, man, the ugly bitch let you grab the hell, throw them in the wild. Them pretty bitches be having that expensive shit in their head. I want you to. To do it like that, you know what I'm saying? Nah, bitch, I was trying to get. Ain't no rules in this shit. Pretty bitch got too many rules, dog. I ain't with that. I ain't good at following rules, dog. Whereas you take kind of a, a regular chick that you just might 
luck up on. Right. You know what I mean? Some average. So some average. And you know, oh shit, you end up well, keeping it a little better than I. <laughs> yeah, you end up keeping that one around. Well, I thought it was. She she lower maintenance. <laughs> you ain't got to take her out as much. Gave me this face like. <laughs> all right. <laughs> she was all right. It was all right. It was, it was a little better than she mm, looked a little better when she naked than I. Right. She do with the clothes on. There you go. Mm-hmm. There you go. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, cause. High maintenance chicks. This is, is a very interesting uh, subspecies. <laughs> well, see, some of them. See, I think we're coming in a new day, though. Okay. When, like, there was a time when high maintenance chicks thought that's all they have to be. Like, it, they could just be bad, and like, and then when it's time to fuck, they could just lay there. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and because they're so bad. You're going to be so happy that you're even fucking them. And that's going to make you think that the pussy's good type of thing. Um, but I think now <laughs> we're, we're in such a competitive age and where these girls are just growing up on all kind of freak shit and just training themselves to be little sex dolls from young. Well, you could do a build a body now. Like you could always you could always get well, your boobs done. It's not done. just to build the body. I'm just talking about being sexual too. Like you see what I'm saying? Like cuz it's not about just how you look. That's what I'm saying. Like you're talking about these high maintenance ones before all they had to do was look good. Now they got to be freaks and look good. You, you see think? what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. If you really want to like keep a motherfucker. Man, I I I bet you you take any girl that's popping on Instagram Got a million followers. Mm-hmm. She could be the worst girl in bed <laughs> on the planet, and she'll still have an army of motherfuckers that's ready to absolutely, you know, to fuck with her. Right. All then, of her DMs, then, every probably get a thousand DMs a day. Right. But then there's that one nigga that's tired of fucking her. Right. Okay. Man, I wish she'd fuck with one of these niggas that's in her <laughs> DMs right now. I am so tired of this bitch. <laughs> Like, I don't give a fuck. All she does is lay there. Like, I done fucked this bitch every which way to Sunday. It is what it is. Like, she's not as fly as everybody thinks she is. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of preparation and right. airbrushing and shit that y'all don't even know about. Right, because there's I'm- a lot of attitude that go into that shit that y'all don't even know about. Right. If you really fucking knew this girl, you'd be sick of fucking her too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Straight up. Telling you, telling you, right? Because I'd heard that a lot of these girls, like a lot of the, the bigger Instagram girls, they got like six or seven apps that they have to run these pictures through through these different filters. Like you know, what I'm saying like it, this ain't just Get a regular your shit looking smooth and all. Come on, be it, knock it off. Then we make the ass bigger. See you, all of that. You, know, <laughs> you see well, the doors all way. Blemishes the these bitches, these women have on a. Bodies and all kind of bullet wounds and stretch marks and you know what I mean. <laughs> but then you see them on scars. Instagram and that shit is smooth as eggs, and you like, God damn, you know. And you see a motherfucking what the fuck, what the fuck is this? You don't look nothing like. Put your Instagram back on. <laughs> I mean, yo, you need. It ain't even about like naked, like like. A lot of times you got these girls that, okay, first of all, they're all holding the shit from this high angle, okay? Because they don't want you to see from here. Right. Or, not... or, they're, or they're, they're, they're putting, you know, like how they kind of sit on the, on the sink, kind of, so their ass kind of They know how to up. do a whole <laughs> lot of little illusionary shit when you holding this shit up and then like, or then you got some that they know they big down here, so all their pictures is right up in here, like very tight in here. Yeah, you got a pretty face. But since all your pictures is like that, we know that something's going on down there. So right. that's a dead giveaway. Um, yeah, man, I, I don't know, man. It, it, it's like, I think there's something to what he's saying, but I think they all kind of, Learning that, that just laying there shit is not, you know what I mean? Not the business. You got to work a little harder for what you want these days. It depends what you want and who you going after. You know what I mean? But you see Black China's with an 18-year-old rapper now? Right. 
Yeah. And from what I understand, because uh, cause a lot of people say it's fake, but uh, you know, I hung out with uh, Adam Twenty Two of uh, No Jumper recently, and he had interviewed the dude. Okay. And he was saying how Black China was calling him like every ten minutes, mm. FaceTiming him, like just wants to talk to him, like you know what I'm saying, like on some regular, real relationship type shit. She was lying in bed, like you know what I mean, like yeah, they're having full on fucking the shit out of her. That's the security. She want that dick security. We talked about this. I mean, that's what's happening. Like, and you, when you 18, you know how much energy you got. You know what I mean? Like, the nuts might not be that long, but you got a lot of them in you. Okay, <laughs> he's probably hitting her with a good five, six nuts a day. Right, right. Maybe more. I don't know, but you got a lot of nuts when you're young like that. Do you know how thirsty niggas are? Like. If you say that you're ready to fuck and you're a female, yo, you have to be like Shrek's mom <laughs> for somebody to not raise their hand and be like, I'll do it. Even niggas that you would think wouldn't fuck with an ugly broad, if he just thought he was getting some free pussy or whatever, like there's niggas that'll do it. I'm telling you. Like, like, well, you know, when we interviewed, uh, when we put out the Yana Jackson interview, when you look through the comments, most of the comments was either dudes, people calling her a liar or whatever else, or dudes saying they would still smash. Of course. She's still a, a very pretty girl. She's all right, for, you know? She, yeah. I've seen them age worse, so she's all right. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's like, a man, let me put it like this. I bet you there's a there's a, a higher percentage of dudes that would that, that that you would think that would fuck with a chick that told him that she was HIV positive. Mm. If she was bad or something. <laughs> like if a bad chick said, I'm HIV positive, but I'll give you the pussy if you want it. I think there's niggas that'll at least debate it. They'll think about it. <laughs> they'll at least hmm. Like that, what's that meme? Well, and, and just in the that same way, emoji faced him. <laughs> mm. Mm. Just in the same way, I had heard from a couple people that like motherfucking uh, Magic Johnson got bitches. You know that <laughs> girls are still trying to fuck with Magic. Like when, when they see Magic Johnson out, girls are trying to holler. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I remember the, the funniest meme I'd ever seen. I had ever seen in my whole. Life. This is still to me the king of memes. Was when Jay Z's Magna Carta album was out. Mm -hmm. There was a picture of Magic Johnson, and it said, "Fuck with me, you know I got it." Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that to me is the king of no memes the has, has internet, surpassed. Right. Fuck with me, you know I got it. With a with a smiling picture of Magic Johnson. The internet is a cold <laughs> place. You gotta fucking love it. I'm happy I was able to say that without laughing Fuck too hard. Fuck with me. You know I got it. Fuck with me. You know wow. I got it. <laughs> Hell, he got it all right. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I think that dudes, you take a bad enough chick. You take a, who's one of the baddest chicks out there? Like a Nicki Minaj, let's say, if you into that. You take a Nicki Minaj... And you about to smash, and you blah, blah, she, oh, by the She's way, like, ah! just got just got before, before you put the condom on. Right. <laughs> I just got to let you know. Got to let you know, I am HIV positive. But you should be okay with that condom. I would say half of dudes are still smash. Half, half the dudes out there are still smash. Half yeah. the dudes. Half. Yeah. Men are that stupid. Yeah, <laughs> especially when the nut is so eminent right there. When you put it like that, yeah. you see, like if you got to, if she said it over the phone, you know, you still got <laughs> niggas that still was gonna smash. Right. But at least you wouldn't have the, you know, the dopamine and all of that flowing <laughs> in your brain and testosterone, shit. all of that other chemical shit <laughs> to have you be like, well, I mean. I mean, they do say latex. You start talking yourself. With, I mean, they do say latex uh, is strong. I mean, 
They do say it, 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 it is Protect a bacteria. Uh-huh. That's right here. That's what it said. So, uh, I said, oh, oh, yeah. I trust this company. Trust, uh-huh. trust, uh-huh. trust, <laughs> trust the company. And stock, uh, Vlad said he got stock in this. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it must be okay. Yeah, it's on a Vlad stock. So it it's must on a Vlad good. stock. It must be Trojan. Good. Yeah, Trojan mm-hmm. and Google. I think those were the two. The yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'm down, Nikki. I'm down. Hold up. Did we just... <laughs> <laughs> we just give me... We just gave her AIDS. Uh, <laughs> oh, we love you. We know yeah. we, this is all hypothetical. And although, and just I, and like I, many things in the world are hypothetical, but they take it as fact. We need to talk about this one day too. I, I had actually heard, and, and there's, and I'm not going to say who it is because I, I don't think it's true. But I remember there was a rumor there was a prominent female rapper who actually was HIV positive before she even got into rap. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Who's still still around today. Ooh. You know, I'll just, I'll just put that out there, and y'all can fill in the blanks as much as you want, because I'm not going to give any more clues about it. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I had heard that, and I'm sure there's actually a number of people in the music industry right now, as reckless as some of these, some of these rappers are, you know what I mean? You look at how many kids does Fetty Wap have? Seven. Seven from how many baby mamas? Five. And I just heard that today. That's why he had like two kids. <laughs> I remember he had two different women pregnant at the same time. Yeah, they were born like a couple of months apart or something like that. Yeah, we call them hood twins. I call them Irish twins. <laughs> Irish twins when you have babies. Hood twins. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, who else just had a, had had a bunch of kids recently? There's there's a a few rappers that have a lot of kids, a lot of different women. Clearly, they're never using condoms. They're never even pulling out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're like, what is that? <laughs> no, what is that? I don't know. Right. What do you mean? I can guarantee you that there are rappers right now who are HIV positive, either knowingly or unknowingly. I am 99% sure about this. Has to be. Not just rappers, just period. People, period. Yeah, I people, mean, period. People, mm-hmm. period. How many people get tested regularly? Mm-hmm. Very few. Very few. You know, sometimes they're too scared. Like, oh, I don't want to know. But there was a song back in the day. I think it was like Arrested Development. Like, if it's positive, uh, I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. Who are out there fucking... Knowingly, unknowingly, man, like, when you just have pussy thrown at you, damn near every day, Boosie, bunch of kids, not to say Boosie got anything, you know what I mean, not saying that at all, shout out to Boosie, that's the homie, friend of the show, but you know what I mean, well, he's got like, like, 10 kids, I think, by like, eight different baby mamas, like, these dudes is out there fucking, every night after the party, sometimes more than one. And if you think about it. Like, every time you fuck, you're not having a kid. You see? So if you got 10 kids, yeah, <laughs> you're doing a lot of fuck. Yeah. Might be 100 times per kid. <laughs> per kid. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I don't, you know, well, I don't know about Boosie. Me and him never had this conversation, but, like, I don't know if Boosie want, like, set out to have all those kids. Because some dudes actually like that. If they have money, they like having more of their offspring. He, he seems to have a very good relationship with his kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, he seems to really love his kids. You know, his sons all have boosy fades and stuff like that. He may just be like, fuck it. I have money. I'm never pulling out on purpose. I want to keep having kids. I want to have as many little boosies and little boosettes. <laughs> you know? As many as I could fit on this planet before I, I die. When I was a child, I remember saying I wanted to have like ten kids. Yeah. And then as you grow, as you get older, <laughs> you start to see what that entails and the right. financial responsibilities. There's a term in Jamaica called seed throwers. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's not. Specifically Bob was a seed thrower. <laughs> yeah, Bob. Mm-hmm. Bob was definitely a seed thrower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he was the product of a seed thrower. Sure, them seed. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Through the field. Fling them seed. <laughs> bong, 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 bong. <laughs> booyaka. Uh-huh. Booyaka, booyaka, booyaka. Hell yeah. Yeah, 
man. I literally had people ask me, was Bob Marley my father? When I had dreads. Really? Like to the point where these ladies came up to me in an airport. Oh, when I had dreads, they always used to. Do you guys have the same nose, kind of? We got the same face. I mean, you look more like Bob Marley than Damien looks like Bob Marley. These ladies were saying this in the airport. To the point where it was like, they was like, do you know who your father is? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, are you sure you're not one of his, his, his children? I said, yes. She's like, do you know who your father is? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I look just like him. Trust me, lady. But yes, I've heard that I look like him. Thank huh. you. But, uh. It's a compliment. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, bro. Shit. Bob, yeah. I mean, Bob, Bob was a sex symbol. You know what I'm saying? Love like, Bob. Women love Bob. Yeah. They love the Lord, too. <laughs> so it's Bob's not your father, though. Huh? Bob's no, not Bob's your father. Not my, maybe musically, <laughs> but no. He may not fling the seed by me, mama. He not fling it. <laughs> Nelly was on Instagram recently, and he said the biggest what if ever in hip hop was the DOC. He's probably right. I saw that. He's probably right. DOC, DOC is actually a friend of mine. Like, you know, we've had dinner together and, you know, we talk. Like, DOC was on the trajectory. Yeah. To be, I mean, he could have been Tupac before Tupac was Tupac. Hmm. Not in a, not in a political way. I'm yeah. just mean a star. He had such star quality when he first came out. Did you know that that first album he didn't swear on that album at all? I I remember hearing that or something I, like that. I, I didn't even I didn't and I was a big fan of that album. I didn't realize it until he told me in an interview. That record was really something special, bro. Yeah. And we we weren't even trying. You know what I mean? Like right. Lord, you know what I mean? If we'd had a real chance to sit down and 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 try, you know. Um uh, no cursing, you know, no it derogatory is. stuff, just great, you know what I'm saying? That shit was so flawlessly put together. And it was realize. so hard yeah, that you didn't realize that there is no cursing. Yeah. But the formula, the diggy doc, all, yo, know, them shits. Like, he was one of maybe one of my first West Coast rappers that I took seriously? Hmm. Because before that... You didn't take Ice Cube seriously? Not until he did his solo shit. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, And this came out before his solo album. Yes. So, yeah, I didn't really know that, first of all, that Ice Cube was the one writing a bunch of shit and blah, 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 blah. And like I said, yeah, he didn't have his solo shit yet. This guy... I was like, okay, yo, this is one of the first West Coast dudes that I felt, yo, this guy could really rap. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? He's actually from the South. He's from Dallas. I know. But, you know, he was but a West Coast. But that's still yeah. West Coast. Yeah. Um, Dallas is West Coast? What? Well, for us it is. I mean, <laughs> anything outside <laughs> anything outside New York is West Coast. Fucking New York. Anything Yorkers, to man. the left of New York is West Coast. <laughs> um, Jersey, that's the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Nah, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> well, I wouldn't call it the mid. No, no, nah, nah, I feel you. Um, yeah, man. He and he has such an interesting story. Like, like you look at a story that had so many bad turns, intentionally and unintentionally. You know what I'm saying? It's like he goes and gets drunk and gets into a car accident and fucks his vocal cords up. But he actually could have gotten it back. They wanted me to continue to perform the record, right? But I couldn't talk at all, you know? Yeah. So I thought if I got, the doctor said, if you get the scar tissue removed, then it'll help expedite the healing process. Maybe I can get something back faster. I didn't want to go lip sync the records, you know, because back then in hip hop, um, Realism meant everything. Everything. You know, so I couldn't, I just didn't have the wherewithal to pull it off mentally. Uh, 
So I went and had the operation, and I found this out many years later, that the doctor that removed that scar tissue removed too much, and so it was never even possible for it to, to ever heal right. like, it, like it once was. You know, that dream was dead after that point. Mm-hmm. Not being patient and being hungry to... Yeah. Watching what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Yeah. All the way to being Dre's homeboy and living with Dre for years and driving all his cars and living in mansions and having money whenever Dre gave it to him but never having his paperwork right. Mm-hmm and never getting the proper credit for all the songs he, he wrote and co-wrote and everything mm. else like that. Mm. Just because he was just partying with Dre all the time. Right. And felt like it was all good. It was all good. Mm. DLC was some shit, man. Um, and you can, t and, and you know, and I always say this, you could tell where the talent is as they continue, as the person continues to do well, even though they're doing different shit and with different people and stuff like that, like he couldn't rap no more, start giving hits to other people. He was really the main, the main driving force behind Snoop. Mm. He was living with Snoop, helping Snoop learn how to rap and write and structure songs and telling him to throw that part out and put this in and you know what I'm saying, like like that type of thing. Snoop talked about that himself. That's dope. That's dope. Well, see, you can have bad turns in your life, but then at the same time, you know, he's had a lot of good turns as well. Like, you know what I mean? Like, after that accident, that could have just been it. We could have never heard from DOC ever again. The fact that he even stayed around and was writing stuff, and you know what I mean? And then and, and mentoring people like Snoop and all, you know, it's like, that's a testament as well. You see what I'm saying? Like, like, that's not nothing to sneeze at. Like, all right, maybe his paperwork ain't all of that, but this man got plenty of life. He's lived a lot of life. You know what I mean? And he's got plenty of fucking stories, I bet, that would, you know what I mean? That are priceless. Um, and just a lot of life lessons, you know? Yeah, and he seems genuinely happy, man. Like he's got a baby with Erica Badu, I'm but he also say has, that. Yeah, uh, but they also, I think Puma. Puma is his is his daughter, who looks just like Puma? Erica. Puma. Who's Puma? Uh, his daughter with Erica. Oh, okay. That's her the name. name her her name, name is Puma. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. But look, you know, he he seems he seems happy these days, man. He's got a family. He's got a new baby. Good. Um, you know, and you're right. He's got he's got a hell of a story. Like, this was actually one of my favorite all-time... There's a few all-time favorite interviews. Like, the Millie Vanilli interview was one of my all-time favorites. This, the DOC interview went down as one of my all-time favorites. Because he was such an important part of NWA, and NWA being my favorite group, mm -hmm. rap group of all time. Uh, to hear all these stories, how it went down, behind the scenes, like... Okay, he probably need to write a book. He, yeah. I bet you he would have a great fucking book. <laughs> like, just a great story. It's a good idea. I'm actually talking to, to some agents right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this up. Yeah. I'm gonna bring up this idea. Yeah. DOC, a book of the DOC. Yeah. Cause cause a book would be better than a movie. You know, we already did the NWA movie. You yeah, he was something in it. more. I mean, uh -huh. his character was in. I know. It. That's what I'm saying. But I'm telling you, the book would be more in depth and yeah. Do a book, DOC. The train wreck around Suge Knight continues. Now what? Well. His fiance went to jail. <laughs> you heard about this one? No. Or the story I? with her was that she had illegally sold that Tam's parking lot tape. You know, the tape of Suge running over okay. most people. Mm -hmm. She sold it for fifty for fifty thousand dollars to uh, TMZ. This was part of the case, and it was supposed to be sealed. You know, it was supposed to be shown to the jury. It wasn't mm -hmm. supposed to be on national news. She somehow managed to get it. She got a copy of it, and it was established that she sold it, you know, illegally. Mm -hmm. So she had to like she got you know she had to pay back fifty thousand to, to Tams like you know, the money she had to give back to the actual, you know, restaurant <laughs> that owned the footage, mm. uh, and she was put on probation for this incident. Okay. She then was caught 
basically setting up interviews with Suge for, I guess, the, the BET special, which she was not allowed to do. She violated her probation. She got sentenced to three years. Wow. His lawyers <laughs> were indicted for trying to bribe one of the witnesses. I saw that. Now, that's, whoa. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Like, the train wreck around this guy. Like, okay, I can understand if you get your cousin to go and try to do that. Okay, look. You're going to go and pay this dude 20000 to have him come in and say that he saw the gun, whatever. I, I got it. Like, you got actual lawyers going to try to bribe witnesses. Right. And not only are they facing a bunch of jail time, but they're also going to get their, you know... Just barred. Just barred. That. They're not going to be able to, to do what mm -hmm. it is they do for a living. Right. Forever. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and he's still in jail. Yeah. His, his, his trial still has, his trial, like I remember I marked in my calendar, it was supposed to start in January. That came and went. I mean, I think he has so many people so fucking scared, yo. Like, uh, you know, I don't think his, his lawyers might have even had a choice. Oh, you think he threatened them? Like, go do this or else? I'll have your kids killed or something. You some think shit. he's willingly doing it? <laughs> you think they're willingly like, you know what, Chug? I have an idea. I have an idea. Why don't I go down <laughs> and try to bribe these guys and maybe, you know, maybe that'll work. You know what I mean? Like, I like, never thought of that, lawyer guy. Yeah. That's that sounds swell. I have nothing to do with it, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> this never came in my mind, but now that you bring it up, I think that'd be great. Thank you. This motherfucker said, "Motherfucker, I need you to fucking go to these dudes, offer them some money." Da 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 da. -da. They said, "Shug, you know I can't do that. I'm the Lord." Motherfucker, did I ask you what you can and cannot do? Now, I told you what I fucking need you to do. Well, listen. You know what happens to people that tell me no, right? <laughs> I, I have been in the room with Suge on a, maybe three occasions. And every time I said, I'm not going to go talk to that guy. Nothing good is going to come out of that conversation. Not in the long run. Because let me tell you, a Vlad TV Suge Knight interview, imagine how big that's, that would be. Me and Suge sitting down together for two hours. Me, with the way I do my interviews and the, the, the knowledge and background I have about his story and all the people I've interviewed about him, me and him sitting down would be the biggest Vlad TV interview ever. But I know that's going to come at a cost that's higher <laughs> than, than what I make off that interview. Yeah. People, people that fuck with Suge end up, end up in the red. I could already tell he don't like you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I already know. That would not be good for you. Yeah, Sugar, Sugar doesn't like me. Mm -mm. I'm just assuming this, right? Uh, me too. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know that he ever said any. I don't even know that he knows of you. But if he, he does. Knows, he, he definitely knows of me. He don't like you. He, de he definitely knows of me because he's said things about me to people that have re related to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, he, he definitely knows who I am. Uh, but, yeah. This guy is just a. Uh, like a sinkhole. <laughs> you know, everyone around him just sinks right along with him. And like, and I've always said this, like, he could be right there with Dre. He could have been right there with Dre right now. With right, Beats and all of that. Beats by Dre, Eminem, 50 Cent, Kendrick Lamar. He could be making a, a piece of all that. Game. Game. Right. Keeps going. You know, if he had just, okay, Dre, you do the music, I'll handle the business. But see, I'll be the cool business dude. Motherfuckers get too greedy. They said, absolute power corrupts absolutely. You see? So this guy wanted absolute power and was corrupted by the power. See, a lot of people don't know how to just sit and play your position. Well, this is kind of an interesting topic. And uh, on Vlad Stocks, uh, I put this out recently. And, uh, you know, I had a picture of Jay with, like, all this truck jewelry on. And it, and it said, you know, worth 100000 Then it had him with, like, no jewelry on. It said worth $810 mm -hmm. and, and what I talked about, 
And this is something that I'm starting to realize more and more in my life is that there is a cost associated with stunting. Mm -hmm. When you brag, there is a cost. You may not realize you're paying that cost as you're doing it, but there is a cost each and every time that you brag about your success in whichever way. And what do you think that cost is? It's a few different costs. Number one, you create jealousy with people that you do know and people you don't know. Who have less than you. Yes, who have less than you, usually. Right. Or even can have as much as you or still feel some type of way about it, right? And that will then cause people to try to take that from you. Well, that see, that's the that's the assumption. That's part. That's the beginning of the torture, of the mental torture. Is that you start to believe that everybody wants to take something from you? Yeah, you see, so the, the, the paranoia the now sets in about everyone and everything around you. Why are they here? Do they really? You know what I mean? Are they trying to? Play me out of my shit, you see? And so you think having money is the most peaceful thing and I would be at such peace if I had all the money. But a lot of times it just brings more worries and anxiety to people because they're worried about, like what you said, anybody can get money, but some of the hardest part is keeping it. Keeping and, it. and within that keeping well, keep, it part. Keep, keeping it and protecting it. And, and, but you, listen how you're saying protecting it. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like like you 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 hardly even probably talk about your own man meat that way. Like like <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You talk about protecting your money more than you talk about protecting your mind or or your brain or you see what I'm saying? Um <clears throat> but we want to protect the money. Like who mm -hmm. is who are the barbarians at the gate coming for your money, Vlad? Well, you see what I'm saying? If anything, people are coming for your mind. People are coming for to control your thoughts more than they are going after your money. But they got you worried about the money. Mm -hmm. You see? Well, if you don't worry about it, that's when shit usually happens. <laughs> when you assume that, you know, you could wear a whole bunch of jewelry and walk through a poor neighborhood where you're wearing the, the, the price of people's houses, that, that nothing's gonna happen to you because everyone loves you so much. You know, like the, the Boosie thing, the hypnotized with hatred thing, you know, where it was mm -hmm. like, Boosie had to move out of his own city that he was the king of. You know, you talk about the king of New York. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, Boosie was the king of Baton Rouge, mm -hmm. and they're really, and he really, really was the king. He really was the yeah, king of Baton all Rouge, all around king. Music, you know, imagine everything. Imagine Jay Z having to move out of New York. I mean, I know he lives in other places, but let's just say Jay Z just literally just could not really stay in New York because there was too many legal problems, too many criminal problems. It was just like you know, on some mace shit, like you know, just left and went to fucking this down south somewhere and just did his shit down there. This is what happens. And um, this is why I think people like Warren Buffett play up this image of, I'm just a regular guy. I got an old house. Mm -hmm. You know, I drive, a, drive, I drive a used car. Like, you know what I mean? His, his daughter was out there like, yeah, you know, my dad told me that I can only buy a used car for him. I had to buy a car with like, you know, hail damage. You know, and it's like someone, someone had pointed out that's like, you know, and I said, yeah, and he's got the same house from 30 or 40 years ago. Some 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 small house, you know, it's not even the biggest house on his block. And someone's like, Warren Buffett lives in a five-bedroom house. That's hardly small. I'm like, he is worth $40 billion. <laughs> Show me one other billionaire who lives in a five-bedroom house on a regular block without a gate, without a fucking helicopter pad and, you know, all this other shit. You will not see it. But I think that Warren understands that once he started to amass this type of money and it was becoming public knowledge how much he had, he had to sort of downplay his image. 
I feel his image is manufactured. When you look at a lot of these guys, they have this manufactured... Downplay. Downplay hmm. image on purpose. Whereas we might have a manufactured... Up, up play. Play. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That's they, interesting. They, they manufacture a poorer image of themselves. Have you ever seen Bill Gates wear anything flossy? I mean, I already said, have you ever seen any real millionaire, any real, 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 I'm talking the ones that have enough money to pay the Jay-Z's and the Floyd Mayweather's. Right. Have you ever seen them in a picture with a fucking money phone or any sort of flossy picture at all? Where they're standing there with all their jewelry. Oh, let me show you all my watches. Look at my watch collection. Look at my shoe collection. Look, come, let me show you all my cars. Like, like, you know, maybe, you know, who, who's the nigga? Um, let's see, I would even take put him in it. Jay Leno wants to show you all his cars. Right. Well, but somebody pays Jay Leno. And the nigga who pays Jay Leno, we've never seen this motherfucker, and we never will. Let me say, I I, I was watching it was this the series that uh Jerry Seinfeld has on Netflix. Right. With and the cars, yeah, yeah, com it's comedians and cars, cars and getting mm -hmm. coffee, right? Right. And, and I remember, I forgot who it was. Some comedian that he was, you know, chilling with that day said, "How many cars do you have?" And he said, "A number that if I told you, you wouldn't say, oh, that's reasonable." <laughs> said I have 46 cars right uh, let's actually look it up I'm, that's, I'm, I'm, that, I'm, that, 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 that's a funny answer but at the same time I see what you're saying like he didn't get specific with it like oh a, a dude a, a nigga would be like oh I have 96 cars like yeah yeah mm -hmm. right so so I, I guess a couple years ago he sold part of his car collection for 22 million dollars part of it yeah he sold out 18 cars and got 17. He sold 17 of those 18 cars. It was, it was a bunch of collector's Porsches and stuff like that, which he sold for $22 million. Just a small portion of his car collection. Right. Probably like 100 cars, 200 cars, mm -hmm. something like that. But notice how he didn't say, I have 200 cars. Right. He said, he's downplaying it. He's making a joke out of it. He's saying, I don't want to say because it's going to make me look crazy. But it's definitely a number that if I said it, I'd say, oh. <laughs> No, you, you wouldn't say that. Yeah, you wouldn't say that's reasonable. <laughs> You'd be like, that's a little crazy. That's a little crazy. <laughs> yeah. The best example I think of this is the, the Palace of Versailles in Paris. Have you ever been to it? Mm -mm. The Palace of Versailles is the greatest building I've ever been in, in terms of just absolute sheer luxury. It's like this giant palace, and every piece of every room is hand painted gold ornaments. It's a huge garden in the back with like square, like structure made out of you know trees and giant, massive pools with gold fountains and so mm -hmm. forth. The last what fuck was you doing there? I, I, I was a, it's a tour, tourist attraction. Okay, yeah, anybody can go see it. It's, it's a tourist <laughs> attraction, and, I, and I'll get to that also. Um, been there a couple times. It's, it's that dope. Okay. I had to go, but you know, I had to purposely go back again to see it. It was that dope. And what's so crazy is this compels in comparison to shit that existed that predated this, the, the, the type of shit that they were trying to emulate. But go ahead. Okay. So, the last royalty that lived in this palace, you know, during a time when Paris, people were having to eat rats and mm -hmm. the such. Mm -hmm. Like, Paris was really poor. French Revolution. Let, yeah. Let them eat cake. Mm -hmm. That that came from inside of that palace. Right. The people eventually surrounded the palace and cut the heads off. Yeah, they were <laughs> so out of touch with how the people yes. were living. They were living in such opulence yes. that, and, and they were so insulated that... Yeah. They didn't know what the fuck till the people brought the shit to their front door. Yes. The Palace of Versailles. Start cutting heads off. Marie triggered Antoinette. Marie Antoinette. It mm -hmm. triggered the French Revolution. And after that, no king or queen was, was brave enough to move back into that palace. Because they were scared that the same thing was going to happen. They were actually going to tear it down. And then they decided to turn it into a museum. Mm -hmm. Into a public, you know, a, a, you know, a, a public attraction. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was finally the... But literally no one actually moved in after that. 
No one wanted to say that they lived in the Palace of Versailles. Because mm. <laughs> it upset people that much. And this is why the millionaires and the billionaires of the world, they play their shit down. Right. But the rappers of the world, we play our shit up. And not only do we play it up, we, we play a game of na 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 where it's like, oh, look how much more I have than you. You're a piece of shit because you're, look at you, you're broke and you're fucking fucked up out here. You can't even do this and that. And look, I got a net, I got rollies and I got a fucking, you know what I mean? I got bitches and I got cars and look at my fucking belts and all of this shit. You know, it's interesting because growing up, you know, with my parents, I, I can't speak for... Russians in general or white people in general. But in my family, you wouldn't talk about how much you make or how much money something cost or, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't ask someone how much their salary was or whatever else. Mm. But a lot of the rappers I interview, I'll throw that question out and they're, they're quick to answer it. They have no problems. Oh, yeah, yeah, this watch was 200000 Oh, yeah, you know, I bought a million-dollar house. Uh, yeah, this car was 250000 You know what I mean? Like... And shit, and people want to know that. It ain't like people don't want to know that. But in the hip hop community, stunting on a motherfucker, it's like you're stunting on somebody. You're not just stunting in general. Because you stunt you've been on stunted somebody. on. Mm. You see? Okay. When, when motherfuckers stunt on you, when society stunts on you, you feel like when you get your chance to stunt, you going to do it. Like, like I was just having a conversation, me and my man, Rock Marciano. Shout out to Rock Marcy. Y'all go get his new album. They heard it's dope. It's dope. <clears throat> um, We were just talking about, like, money and, and, and shopping. And, and, and when he was talking about, yeah, he said, I don't like to call it shopping. I like to call it healing. And I'm like, mmm. Healing? Healing. Okay. Cause it's kind of deep. Cause like, like when you come from not having shit, and you get a little money, and you go to the store, and you, it makes you feel good. It's almost like you, you're healing some of your wounds that that were inflicted when these motherfuckers were stunting on you. Hmm. You see? Now I'm gonna go to the store and do a little healing. Hmm. You see? I've never thought of it like that. Yo, as black people. Or just as people that are used to not having some shit. Like, I might have not consciously said, yo, I'm going to go heal myself today. But you best believe, you know, when you was younger, maybe you, you had a little a little spree where, oh, man, I, I need some new kicks. And, and when you finally get your new kicks, it's like, you know what I mean? Feel like you could breathe again or some shit. Like like you feel like you rejuvenated, like you have hmm. been healed. You see? Hmm. So it's like some people go shopping and all of that as a, as a form of therapy. The shopping therapy. I've heard that before. Yes. But you, you hear of women do that. Nah, but men do it too. Hmm. Men do it too. When we go, come on, B. When you get some Jordans and all of that, when you, come on, you healing. When you put the motherfuckers on for the first time and all of that, maybe the fifth, the tenth time, you don't give a fuck. But when you first get them brand new joints, you feeling good as a motherfucker. I mean, listen, I'll, I'll tell you, like when I, when I, you know, the, when Vlad TV started doing well, I went and got all the Gucci shit I've always wanted, and you felt good at that I felt, moment. I felt, I felt great. I After had, a while, yeah. it just was some shit. You know, and, and I, I was thinking about this recently. Is that like all my fly shit? is like five, six years old. <laughs> you know, it's five, right. six, seven. Like, you know, it's all older. Like, you can look at my old Instagram and see the same shit. Right. Like, you know, that I'm wearing now. Like, when I go out, I'm wearing old shit. And because it's like, I don't really have the desire to, to Try buy Try to keep up with every fucking yeah. thing. You know, like, you know, all this new Gucci shit with like the snakes and all that stuff. I don't got none of that shit. <laughs> like, all that shit the rappers be wearing. Right. On their Instagram, I don't mm -hmm. got none of that. I got some Gucci shit, but it's all Gucci old. With the, cobra, with the cobra collars. Yeah, I ain't got none of that. I ain't got none of that. Because it's like, I'm just sort of over it. It's like, okay, I have, if I need to do that, I, I got it in my closet already. And I'll just pull, dust it off a little bit, pull it out. You know, but to get keep getting new shit, 
I just, it's just not really a priority anymore. I kind of got it out of my system, I feel. Hmm. Some people never get it out of their system. I mean, it's deep, man. It's, it's all psychological shit, man. Yeah. We all dealing with a lot of psychological baggage and we manifest it in different ways. That's all. Some do it through money, sex. It's all, it's all, you know. Yep. Depends what you're into. Uh, Paris Jackson mm -hmm. asked fans to stop editing her photos to make her look more white. <laughs> Is that what she thinks making her look more white? <laughs> she need to say that to the well, mirror okay. too then. Well, she, she's saying, <laughs> no, no, she should. Hey, Mira, stop editing those photons. <laughs> You're making me look white in the mirror. She said, I enjoy every single edit I see, but please stop lightening my skin to make me look more white. And please stop darkening my skin to make me look more mixed. I am what I am. I'm aware of what I look like, and I am finally happy with it. She said, look more mixed. So she's yeah. sort of inf inferring. So inferring that she believes she, that Michael was her real father. Yeah. Hmm. There is no, I mean. I, I feel that's a form of cognitive dissonance. This, this, this is. Come on. Like, I don't care how much plastic surgery I get. There's still my DNA. You understand? It's all written there. Plastic surgery does not change your DNA. No. So there's no way that my seed is going to come out looking like the product of my plastic surgery. Right. I've, as I've always, opposed to <laughs> what my DNA really is. Right. I've always told, like I remember on Twitter that this kind of went viral <laughs> when I tweeted. I said, dudes, I said, fellas, before having kids with a woman, make sure you see what she looked like before the plastic surgery. Because that child is not going to look like. <laughs> Find out what a mom look like. All of that. Because uh, that child will not look like, look like the plastic surgery version of that woman. Exactly. So DNA is a motherfucker. So don't tell me that old broad-nosed, uh, much darker Mike is going to come out and have a seed like that. Like well, all his kids look like this. Huh? All his kids are white. All whose kids? Mike's kids. Because they're not fucking his kids. They not his kids. So so why, pardon me, why all his brothers and sisters' kids look like they black? Right. And, and some of them have white wives, right? Yes. And they look like Jacksons. Like they look like fucking Jacksons. Why the fuck? He the only one <laughs> that got these white ass kids. Come on, that look like him after the surgery. Right. You got to be kidding me. Like, like, and for us to sit there and act like and allow him to lie to us. He lied to us about the, the, the vitiligo. Right, because okay. what's his name? Uh, Quincy Jones came out and said that was bullshit. I came out and said it was bullshit. <laughs> Fuck Quincy Jones, okay? I didn't need Quincy Jones to tell me. Um... <laughs> He, he lied about the vitiligo. He lied about the plastic surgery. Oh, I may have had one or two things. That, bitch, your nose falling off. The fuck you talking about? You might have had one or two. Just so I could sniff better. The fuck out of here. You're lying. Okay? Now, you lying about these fucking kids and want us to believe that these come from your loins. Okay? When you probably ain't seen pussy since pussy had you. Type motherfucker. Um, I'm sure Mike got some pussy on low. Yeah, but he didn't really want it. Like, you know what I mean? You, you never know. Like, you never know. You, you never know. Nah, I, I feel like I know. I feel like, I feel like, now Prince, he was getting some pussy. Yeah. Mike? <laughs> Not so much. Okay. Not so much. So you were saying? I think he was jerking off to Disney movies or some shit like that. <laughs> Tinkerbell or some shit. But anyway, um, yeah. You're not going to allow me to look at those kids and, and say, oh, no, those are Mike's kids. Those kids are really black. You know, that's like looking at the the, 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 the World Trade Center and say, oh, no, that wasn't a, a, a controlled explosion. Yeah, the, 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 the planes really brought, brought that building down.
down. Well, don't you fucking make that face, Vlad. <laughs> don't you make that face. Um, yeah, it's called cognitive dissonance. When you see something, <laughs> and it's obvious that what you're looking at is something else, but you still believe whatever the fuck you want to believe. You uh, see he, what I'm saying? He, he, I'm looking at all three of his kids. He has the three whitest kids that any whole, black man and the whole has kingdom ever of white them. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't seen white people have kids you know that white. Mean? Like, come on. They must all work at White Castle or something, man. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> dude, dude. White Castle. These are white ass kids, yo. Hey. Um, listen, because you could even you could take okay, so something like a logic. Right. Logic is mixed. But you know, when you really take a you know, at first glance he might look white. Yeah, but when but you take you, a closer look, you, you can look at his hair texture, some of his features, I get it. Um what's the name of uh that girl that what's his name is dating that Scott Disick is dating? Um, Lionel Richie's daughter. Right. Okay. Sophia. Sophia Richie, I think. Okay. Uh-huh. <clears throat> she kind of initially passes for white. You know what I mean? She even said that growing up, her white friends would, like, say black jokes around her, just not realizing she's half black and stuff like that. But once you take a closer look at her, you're like, okay, I see it now. I see it. You look at the Jackson kids... And you're like, I, I don't, don't see, see shit. I don't see nothing black about y'all, like, at all. Like, and I feel like that's what he wanted for himself. Like, he wanted to remove, he grafted himself. He wanted to remove all <coughs> traces of black from him. And he, and he tried to take that into his children. He didn't want, he, I believe in his mind, being black was a curse. And he didn't want to pass that curse on to his children. So he removed his DNA from the equation. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Literally. Literally. <laughs> right, because, like, for example, like, you know, we were talking about Boosie earlier. I feel that Boosie gets a kick out of seeing little mini versions of himself. You know what I'm saying? Like, the fact that all his kids have the same haircut. Oh, do they? <laughs> yeah, they yeah. all have Boosie fades. Oh, that's hilarious. His sons are all required to have Boosie fades. Are you serious? I'm dead ass. Required. Required. Ah! Not a choice. <laughs> You can't have dreadlocks. I listen. You can't look like little Yachty with braids. You're wow. getting a goddamn Boosie fade whether you, you like it or my not. Little clone out this yes. world. Wow. I think Boosie gets off at having little little Boosies running around that look like him. Because I think Boosie is proud of what he's accomplished and his talent level and stuff like that. And he's probably thinking some of that's going to trickle down to his seeds. How could you be the greatest entertainer of all time and rob your children from any of that? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're robbing your children out of potentially being even bigger than him. Right. Imagine if one of these kids had his voice. Mm. Imagine that. You could say whatever you want about Michael. His voice was on a different caliber. The tone, right. the tonal quality, like no From one, a child. From a child. Matter of fact, who, who, who would you say is a better singer than Michael Jackson? Marvin Gaye, maybe? <clears throat> Marvin Gaye didn't have, I think, as powerful of a voice as Michael. Maybe a little smoother. Well, Michael Jackson, Michael's voice is hard to even put because when you say powerful, it, it has power in a different way because yeah. it's so high, I but then it's right. like, but it's, uh, hmm. I don't know, man. And so crazy because Michael, man, when you listen to the young Mike, yo, those were some soulful ass songs. Yeah. Like, like those was black people's music when we were, when I was a kid. Like, like, and then for him to grow up and just kind of like strip all that and like literally, like mentally, physically, musically, like. He ended up starting making white people's music. You see what I'm saying at the end, like yeah. Well, you know, after Quincy Jones, you know, because I, I I double checked because I wanted to make sure, but Quincy Jones did Off the Wall, Thriller, and Bad, mm -hmm. and then after that, Mike still had some hits, but it wasn't like the bodies of work were like those three albums. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't. You know, Quincy was a bad motherfucker. You know, what I mean, like I like I met him recently. He still talks shit. He was still the flyest dude in the room. Like, you know, what I mean, he was, his outfit was on point. Like, <laughs> I'm saying, Quincy, Quincy was on, was on some shit. Like, he brought that 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 swag and that style to the equation. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, man, like Mike literally had three children that were not not his own. 
but he raised them as his own. No, Someone I mean, got that's, paid. That's admirable. But I'm just saying, don't don't piss on my fucking head and tell me it's raining. Because <laughs> that's not cool, B. Yeah, man. To say, to say, you know, don't make don't make me look more mixed is like But but see, you know, I almost feel like Listen, she's going to believe what they were told her. Like, if that's what they tell she might truly believe this. And if that's the case, you know, I can't fault her. You see what I'm saying? Like, me in my lifetime, I know of two people, two different families, where someone had a child. Someone was married. The wife messed around, had a child with someone of a different race. The child comes out looking different than all the other siblings, and they just sort of kind of lie <laughs> for as long as they could, as long as they can. Sometimes for 10, 15, 20 years, and just tell the person, like, oh, you must have a relative in your family that must have been that yeah, race. A little darker, yeah. We didn't know about him. You know what I mean? Like, listen, we still think Chloe might be OJ. Baby. Right, that's what I'm okay. saying. <laughs> Perfect example. We still think Chloe might be OJ baby. Let's keep it real. Right. Okay. Well, and even if she's not OJ's baby, she, she is not Rob. Another. I don't think she's Rob Kardashian Sr.'s baby. Because they love black men too much in that fucking family. <laughs> and they got that taste from the mama. <laughs> <laughs> they got that taste from the mama. Did you see the, the interview, the What If I Did It interview? This nigga had more confessions than Usher in that motherfucker. <laughs> This motherfucker said, this is my confession. He said, hypothetically. <laughs> if I'm going to tell it, then I'm going to tell it all. <laughs> I said, what the fuck? Like, that was crazy. That was crazy. That was crazy. But you know what? It's that, that's the G-Dep syndrome. I believe that, because first of all, I've never killed anyone. So mm -hmm. I don't have that guilt on my soul okay but i feel like you know there must be a certain guilt that comes with that shit like especially the mother of your children how many kids i Two? think if you kill anyone there's gonna be a certain guilt on your heart depending, on your spirit depending on the situation you're going in, in to self, in self-defense i don't I, man even in self-defense i think you're gonna vlad i don't think so i until it happens to you, you can't say, but I'm telling you, even in self-defense, you're going to feel a certain way about taking somebody's life. Now, I, I've had serious conversations with people that have killed people in in those types of situations. And, you know, I, I've gone through some shit in my, my own life. I've never actually killed anybody, but I've gone through some shit in my own life. And, and we started sort of comparing kind of like our feelings about certain situations. And it's like... Actually killing somebody, even though, you know, society views it as a certain type of way, some people look at it as, hey, it had to happen. I, you know, it was him or me. I'm not going to feel bad about him or me. I know dudes that was real killers, lad. And they'll even tell you, like, on a first ones, like their first couple ones, it's fucking with them. You, you don't think some people deserve to die? I do. I'm not saying that. I, I think, you know. I didn't, we're not talking about that. You know, you either. think the guy that flips the switch, you know, that, that injects Dylan Roof with the, with the, um, you know, if Dylan Roof gets the death penalty, you know. Like I said, the first time he did it, yes, he felt away. After the 50th time, no, he doesn't give a fuck. This is what I'm saying. That's mm -hmm. with anything. Okay. But whether people deserve to die or not, we're all going to die, first of all. So we all deserve to die because we're all going to die at some point. That's a fact. Um, I'm just talking about the karmic feeling and like just having that on your head, man, that you killed somebody. How do we even start talking about this? What was the original? About OJ. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, just the karmic shit of, of, of you know. Killing your wife or killing anybody, man, it's just, it's, 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 it's not something that I think we as humans are built to just take lightly. You see what I'm saying? 
Well, I mean, you used to have, you know, the, the, the gladiators in the Coliseum. People used to right, come. But that watch. was only a certain, but that wasn't, everybody didn't want to be a gladiator. Well, but everyone wanted to go see it. Everyone yeah, wanted to go see a murder see happen it. in front of them. Yeah, and we still want to see train wrecks, but you don't want to be the one doing it. That's why you admire the gladiator. Damn, he's able to kill all those people without without having that on his. I could never do that. That's what that's what's so like. You see what I'm saying? Voyeuristic about the shit in the first place for a lot of people. Like, and they yeah. wouldn't. And and it's a way to live through that without having the karmic um, guilt of your own self. Fair enough to do it. Fair enough. Have you ever met anybody of any color or, or race or whatever? that said, OJ did not do it. He was 100% framed. He had nothing to do with it. No. <laughs> no. Why would I? Because, <laughs> you know, OJ was a hero to black people for a while. Maybe not quite so much anymore. But when it happened, you remember how happy you were when he got off, right? Yes. Was all was all your black friends and family happy as well? Most people that I know were happy. I mean, um, but it wasn't about OJ. Okay. It wasn't about OJ. OJ represented all of us in that moment. Mm -hmm. The fact that all of us as black people have been shitted on and 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 oppressed. For, for all the time that we've been here, you know, coexisting with Europeans, um, the law has been used against us time and time again. They create laws or change laws to fuck black people over, you know, again, since Europeans got here to co-mingle with us. Um, and to ultimately subjugate us. So in that instance, to see the machine backfire on itself <laughs> and work in the favor of someone that looked like us, mm -hmm. that we can identify with, although OJ had always been a sellout type of black man. You see what I'm saying? Like... From his college days, he was considered the more sellout black athlete as compared to, let's say, a Jim Brown or, you know, whoever was popping back then. Um, so, yeah, in that moment, it wasn't about his innocence or guilt. It was just the fact that this black man had amassed enough riches to where he was able to turn the, the system on its head and the same shit that they do to us, they he flipped it and was able to get off through the loopholes that white people use every day for themselves. Mm. That's what we were celebrating. Fair enough. Not because we thought an innocent man had been <laughs> set free. <laughs> Please. That didn't matter. And... and Sorry, Nicole, but you know how many fucking sisters have been murdered and raped by white men and never even brought to justice at all? Good point. So, yeah. sorry, Nicole, but... Oh, well. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well. Ture came on Vlad TV recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as has happened multiple times, Nas's beat picking came up as a topic. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ture actually asked Nas about people criticizing him for his beat picking. Right. And Nas said, and Nas said, I can speak to this. I have discussed this exact issue with Nas. Um, I, I don't entirely agree. I think if you look at Thief's theme, um, hmm. You know, Illmatic. I mean, the beats on Illmatic are incredible. Mm -hmm. Thief's theme, some of the other stuff on Streets Disciple. I mean, Streets Disciple is my second favorite Nas album, and I think a, a lot of the music there is fantastic. But to your point, I asked Nas once, do you know what the biggest criticism of you out there is? 
And he said, yeah, it's the bee picking. I, I know this. He, so he knows, he knows this is out there. And he had a really interesting comment about that critique. He said, I don't want it to be too easy. I could pick the hottest beats. Everybody comes to them, comes to him with their hottest beats. Just like if you're in Hollywood, if you're Will Smith or George Clooney, you see the best scripts first. Nas and Jay-Z see the best, hear the best beats first. But he's like, if I just pick all the hottest beats, that would be too easy. I want it to be a little harder for me. So it's part of him adding to the challenge of being Nas and making Nas music. That's how he looks at it. Okay. And so after hearing that, what do you say? Uh, I'm not really buying it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really buying it. You are, as an artist, you're trying to create the best product that you can. And to, you know, purposely, you know, not use one of the main ingredients in that product. And it potentially churning out to be a product, you know, a slightly inferior product. Either means that Nas doesn't really care as much as people think he does. Or maybe he's just using that as an excuse to say, oh, yeah, I'm purposely not picking the best beats. That's what I think. Mm. Hmm. The fact that he's actually admitting to it, saying, yeah, I'm purposely skipping the hottest beats and but going. But he's not saying he's picking whack beats. You're almost saying he's a whack beat picker. Like, like. I am saying that. Um, I am saying that. Someone of his caliber and his respect level, I think he is somewhat of a whack beat picker. Like, you know, I've said he's the worst beat picker of all time, of people of his, you know, of his caliber. This is what I've said. And, but like, like he just said, how could you say that about, I mean, his first album, Illmatic, had some of the my, illest my, beats my criticism has always out been, there. My criticism has always been after Illmatic. I've always said Illmatic is a perfect album. I think the beat picking on that is, is you know, incredible. Past his first album. Hmm. Thief Sting was a great one. Steve Steam was a, was a great one, which he ended up reusing on Hip Hop Is Dead. Hate me now. <laughs> hate me now. Hate me now is cool. And he has his moments. He has his moments. If Still Matic world, has, some, has some gems. Huh? Still Matic has some gems on it. I rule the world. Great fucking song. Yeah. Um, but then he followed up with, Shorty, tell me what's your price. You can hold my eyes. See, that was that Trackmasters <laughs> era, though. That's when Trackmasters was trying to get him to the bag, though, bro. <laughs> Trackmasters was trying to get him to that, to that bag, that fancier, that... Say, you owe me something. Owe me... But see, not for nothing, though. They still kind of play that in the clubs, yo. That shit is all right. Like, on me back like you owe your tax. Shaking like that. I mean, come on, it wasn't bad. I mean, that's it was different. <laughs> it was different. That's that's not a whack song though. It's just different for Nas because genuine and yeah, that was different. But 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 see, listen. At the same time, for some people, it's not interesting unless you do give yourself a challenge. You see what I'm saying? Like, like, who, who always wants to do the easiest thing? Like, cause, cause to me, the most, the most rewarding things in life are always going to be the harder thing. Like, whatever's the easiest thing is usually not that fulfilling. I don't like your face right now. <laughs> Let me talk. <laughs> Like you're not buying none of this shit. None of it, but go on. <laughs> no, no, but seriously. The best things in life are definitely some shit you got to work for. I mean, if somebody just gave you this Vlad shit and, you know what I mean? It wouldn't be the same as 
when you worked hard for it and, and got you to where you at now. Agreed? Like hard work yeah. is something that it pays off in the long run. Um, for him to say, I'm not going to pick the, the most obvious beat. See, that's what I think he's, I don't think he's saying, I don't pick hot beats. I'm not just going to pick the one that's the most obvious. And maybe for him, that's a form of, <laughs> I still don't like your face. It's making me laugh. <laughs> Go on. Maybe for him. That's a form of a challenge, B, of a self-challenge. Like, but but if, if all his beats were mediocre, then you might be right. But he actually does have hot beats sprinkled in there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Who, who, uh, uh, they shooting. Right. We'll save that song. They shooting. shooting. Made you look. Made you look. There mm -hmm. we go. Made you look was a hot ass beat. Yeah, that was dope. You know what I mean? Like, they, they flipped Apache in a way that really, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I love when they take a, a fucking beat that you've heard before, but they, you know, I think Salam Remy did that. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's like, he'll he'll come up with some gems here and there, but when you look at the body of work each time, it's always like, ah, yeah, that one song's cool. That song's cool. The yeah, rest of it. You know, and it's like, I'm, I'm just not buying, like, if all his shit was challenging, I'm going to challenge like, <laughs> you know, like, All the shit's going to be like that. The whole album's going to be weird. Wait you know, minute. like like an 808s and like, okay, for example, like, hey, Kanye. Y'all needed to just see what he said. <laughs> I'm Listen, glad that if all his shit is challenging. <laughs> <laughs> When he did 808s and Heartbreaks, was challenging, <laughs> <laughs> was challenging himself, right? Okay. That was an album that was left field. Kanye, he assumed people weren't really gonna fuck with right. it, and people kind of did it. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then he said, "Okay, let me go back and show y'all why I'm Kanye West." Like you know, let me yo. The next album was had the jams on it. Like you know right. what I mean? Like. Yeah, okay. He had that one project where he challenged himself. Okay, I got it. He has a lot of albums out. But it's like consistently, after Illmatic, there's a lot of challenging going on. <laughs> you know, he's Danny the Challenger. Space Shuttle Challenger. <laughs> All he's challenging. There's a lot of challenges going on. Oh, man. Well, hey, man, he said it himself. Okay. You know, and I feel I feel somewhat validated by well, this. Well, well, well. Okay. I feel somewhat valid. Because the fact that well, Nas has said, if he is, let's just say you're right. Well, then that almost makes him even iller because the fact that we still talk about him as one of the greatest with his, you know, deficiency in beat picking, um, that's a hell of a, of a fucking accomplishment. Well, I, th I think we all love living legends. Everyone still loves Rakim. All the, everyone up to a certain age loves Cool G Rap. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, The fact that I got to interview Cool G Rap a couple times is a thrill to me because he's so, he's so nice. You know what I mean? People love who they, they love their heroes, the people that, you know, in their childhood that whose music was a soundtrack to your life. Because let me tell you something. When Illmatic dropped, that's all you listened to for months, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't even Months. know that. And I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that I was right. Oh, absolutely. Everybody who was a hip-hop head, they were just listening to Illmatic over and over again. And it there's became, only certain albums that yeah. come around like that. That do that, that. That you're listening to that. That's the soundtrack to your life. To your life. For at least a few months. A few you months. listen to and, this and then, every you know, day. I remember where I worked when that album came out. And I remember going to work, listening to it on the way to work. And, you know, the, the shit that happened. You know, it, it becomes a soundtrack. An actual soundtrack to a chunk of your life. Mm -hmm. And and you're still alive. Like, you know what I mean? You still see him perform and whatever else. Yeah, you're going to love this dude. You're going to love it, love him for what, what he did and what he brought to your life. But there's a lot of people like this. You know what I mean? There's a lot of very important, you know, shit, Quincy Jones. Like, damn. Like, I, I, I when I got to meet and talk to Quincy Jones, it was like, yo, this is the guy who did Thriller. Like, god damn. Um, 
you know? And, and those people are always going to be looked at and put on a pedestal while they're still alive and, and long after. Nas is definitely one of those. But that don't mean you can't, you can't criticize them. That means you can't say, well, this is dope, but not all this is dope. You know? I mean, you know, Tupac had a great, like, he had an incredible run with, like, you know, Me Against the World, All Eyes on Me, Machiavelli. Those were three great albums. His first album was okay. Strictly for my niggas? No, before that. He had one before that? He had one before that. That's what I'm saying. The one, the one um, Brenda's Got Tupacalypse a Baby. Tupacalypse Now. Is that what it was called? I think, yeah. Tupacalypse okay. Now. Yeah. yeah. Brenda Got a Baby was on there. All right. And that was dope. But, like, Trapped was, that was cool. I remember even when it came out, people weren't really, like, Brenda Got a Baby came out. Keep Your Head Up, I think, was on that, too. It was like, oh, okay. These, these are. Okay. You know who I think is the biggest hit and miss artist? Who's that? LL. Mm-hmm. LL would have some albums that were bomb, and then the next one would be like some bullshit. But then they'll come back, right, was with it, some other shit that was, was four, fucking was crazy. Fourteen shots of the dome, the one with pink pink cookies on it, right? That shit was whack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But he even said it. I remember seeing an interview where he even said it was whack. It was like he even was like, look how whack this cover is. Yo, <laughs> you know, but like, he even like. But he'd have songs that were like, I'm telling you, I didn't like going back to Cali back when it first came out. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But but that was early in his career. He still yeah. had many dope shit after that. Like yeah. so it was like Mama said knock you out he came would out hit after that. Yeah. And miss. Hit and miss. Like, but he had a lot of hits, but he damn sure did have a lot of misses too. And is he still a living legend? Absolutely. So yeah, yeah. that's when you think about it. I mean, nobody is. 100%. Jay-Z's second album was questionable. Yeah. I'll give you that. The one with uh, Babyface and uh, Touch yeah. Me When I'm Gone. <laughs> okay. The Sunshine. Yeah. yeah. There's a certain stigma that an artist, that a rapper or musician in general keeps when they just stick to music. Because you look at like an Ice Cube and although he was considered one of the all-time greats at rapping, he kind of became known as the guy who did the family movie. Right. After a while. So LL, LL too. LL, Will Smith. Mm -hmm. Not that Will Smith was considered one of the greats, but shit, he has a Grammy. People were, people were fucking with what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Summertime is an all-time classic song. Yep. You cannot front. Parents just don't understand. It was dope. You know, dope I, at that time. I think I could beat Mike Tyson, like, you know what I mean? But like, I think Summertime was probably the, kind of the mature. His big mature hit. Right. That it was like, that okay, was this is not last. the jokey, jokey song. This is an actual cool summer anthem that everyone was Well, people with. thought he was trying to sound like Rock Kim on that record. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, but, you know, but he just became the movie guy. So you kind of just forget about his musical shit. Latifah Whereas, too. Same thing with Latifah, right. Whereas Nas, he's been a rapper the whole time. Jay-Z, he's been a rapper the whole time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep, yep. Tupac was in this interesting kind of transition where he was acting, he was rapping, but he was kind of going hard on both. You know, I think, and I think what happens is, and I've heard this before, is that the Hollywood money is so good that you like fuck this. So you just say fuck this rap shit, right? But Tupac was going hard on both, right? And and from what I, you know, from what I was told. He was getting ready just to, to say fuck rap in general mm. before he died. He was supposed to give Machiavelli away as a free mixtape. Wow. That's how much he was over it. Wow. And that was a great fucking, that was a great this album. Might be his best album. Hmm. That and two, you know, All Eyes on Me are, are my two favorites. But, like, Pac was like, fuck it. Like, I'm, you know, because there was, there was a story I heard that he was supposed to be Will Smith's character in Independence Day. Whoa. He was about to do the big budget. Whoa. You know, really? sci-fi action type wow. shit. Wow. And if he had pulled that off, because think about it. Will Smith was not the number one choice, even with the, the Pac story, rumor, whatever. No one wanted to, to put Will Smith in that role. Mm. 
He was not. He was the right. He was the, the funny prince. guy. Yeah, he wasn't no. He wasn't an action didn't star. Didn't have to bulk, bulk up a little bit. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like nobody believed that Will Smith could pull off that role. Right. And after he pulled it off and killed it, he is now Will Smith, the action star. Men in Black. Right. That was. I am Legend. That was a turning point for him. Oh, it was. It was a massive turning mm-hmm. point. And now that I think about it, hell yeah, Pac could have played that fucking role, right? Yeah. And if Pac had pulled that off, if Pac had pulled that off, he might have been. He might have been <laughs> ex Will Smith. Because think about it, he had the look. The ladies liked him. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he had the rawness. He could have been bigger than Will Smith. He was a little crazy, so, you know, there's, <laughs> there's that part. But, you know, but let's just say this. He managed to calm down and say, okay. Right. Because he was actually, like, he was supposed to be fucking with, like, uh, like, like he, he was really fucking because he was uh, engaged with Quincy Jones's daughter. Mm-hmm. So from what I understand, Quincy was supposed to like, you know, basically, you know, introduce, you know, pull him into his machine and, and everything else like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, he he got killed unfortunately. But but think about it. Like you just like as as raw as Ice Cube was. He just doesn't get mentioned like the Nas is. You're right. And, you know, and I, I would say, as a rapper, I actually like Ice Cube better than Nas. Ice Cube, Ice Cube in his prime, I like better than Nas in his prime. And it might be an East Coast, West Coast thing. Yeah, it might be. Because I really loved um, Ice Cube in his prime, but I'm hesitant to go yeah. there with you right now because, you know. Nas is Nas. Yeah, Nas is Nas. You know what I mean? Like, it also, you know also I mean? comes down to, you know, Ice Cube had the, the energy and the anger and the, the emotion, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, that Nas didn't really have. Nas was more of a smooth street poet, street poet, mm-hmm. you know, nice with his words, nice with his delivery, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> kind of like a Rakim. Yeah, Nas you know won't I mean? yell at you. Type no, shit. no. I liked Ice Cube a little bit better because he had a little bit of a range. Mm. You know, but but both of them are incredible lyricists. Both mm-hmm. of them are nice. You know, but but now forty uh forty forty mil uh your man just made Nas. Nice. Uh, Apparently, he had something to do with the ring. Ring, yeah, that's what they're saying. I haven't confirmed. I know someone that's part of his investment group, mm-hmm. and I reached out to him, and he didn't answer. So I'm thinking it's one of those things where just letting people kind of run with it. But but I heard they you know they did well. Sometimes these numbers get exaggerated or under. You know it's like one of those things. Like we talked earlier, Nas doesn't want to say. I right, could be playing it down. Right. He could get smart now. He, he still got the Khalees problems. Exactly. And, oh, and I heard she's back now. <laughs> she's trying to re up. That she said, oh, he makes more money than he used to make now. Right. So she's trying to like readjust that child support right, right. now. Right. Because you know. And I'm not saying this had anything to do with it, but sometimes coincidences are coincidences. Right after Logic announced that he made thirty million off his deal, his oh, negotiation he got divorced deal, or something. He's getting divorced. His wife of two years, who they just had a baby with, he's getting divorced with her. Right. See what I mean about bragging about your money, throwing that out in the universe. Can't even tell your own woman. Oh, where are you getting 30 mil? So if I just leave your I've, ass. I've been tired of your ass. That's like, Shit. that's a good 15 for me. All these fucking tours. Hell all these, yeah. These I can bitches showing a, up in my DMs. A free 15 if I just leave your ass right now. Right now. Hmm. Free 15. Shit, I could go buy a motherfucker. I like that. way that sounds. <laughs> free 15. <laughs> Hell free 15. yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, man. Stutton has a cost. This is true. That's how we're going to end it. Okay. Lord Jamar, my man. Be lad.